Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak a little bit about my most recent research work. Uh, I will be talking about the alignments of biomolecular contact maps. Now, contact maps are a very simple discretized version to uh, represent RNA or protein structures. You probably all have seen these diagrams that uh, nicely <coughs> expose uh, secondary structure elements uh, of proteins uh, in this example here or of RNAs. I will mostly be speaking about RNAs, but uh, the main idea of this presentation is actually to give you a different perspective on how to compare contact maps. Now, the usual way to do that uh, is to find an order-preserving matching between two contact maps such that uh, the number of edges that connect matching pair of vertices is maximized. This amounts to essentially optimizing the overlap of edges or contacts. Here, we want to take a different route and ask what are alignments of contact maps. So the idea here is not uh, to only to compare two contact maps, uh, but to allow us to get multiple alignments of contact maps so that we can do the usual things that we can do with alignments, which is, for instance, extract consensus structures uh, or identify particularly conserved substructures or sub-elements uh, within a large set of aligned structures. In order to address this point, what we have to do is we have to uh, convince ourselves that there is actually a reasonable way of defining alignments of contact structures. In order to do that, uh, we'll take a step back and look briefly at what actually are alignments. So if you look at multiple sequence alignments, they consist of columns. And one of the most important properties of sequence alignments is that these columns, like the original sequences, again are ordered. And we can uh, compose these alignments, both horizontally and vertically, uh, into alignments of a subset of uh, sequences, and we can also extract uh, substructures or subparts of sequences by just restricting ourselves uh, to uh, the uh, part of the uh, number of columns. This is something that we can do in general with uh, alignments uh, as composable structures. In fact, there is a number of other examples that have been used frequently in bioinformatics, such as the alignments of forests, where the idea is the alignment of forests or trees is again a tree where each node is just labeled uh, with the elements of each one of the constituent uh, trees or forests that are contained in it, and we just mark on whether there is the point re uh, retained in the individual input or whether it is deleted. So what we have is we have a superstructure that allows us to project out the individual constituents, in this case forests, uh, just by deleting what is marked by a gap character. It actually turns out that there is a different way uh, of looking at this, uh, which is using a forest uh, as just uh, a point set endowed with two different orthogonal partial orders, and it turns out that the usual deletion operation uh, just uh, corresponds to restricting uh, these partial orders to the individual uh, <clears throat> to the subset that we, that we want to retain that corresponds to the points in the individual uh, constituent uh, object or structure. So our idea is now, can we generalize the idea of alignments as super objects from which we can get sub objects by projections to the general case? And this is exactly what we will be doing here. So an alignment simply consists of a partition of the union of the input uh, uh, points of the input nucleotides or the input amino acids in such a way that in every column, every class of this uh, partition, there is an, a single object retained and 
uh, that, uh, and this is the really important property that we obtain the individual input objects uh, as projections. So we can see this uh, in the example of graph alignments where uh, we have two input graphs that are just placed on top of each other by means of a matching uh, and this gives rise to a super graph that contains both the common uh, edges and common vertices which is marked by pairs of points uh, and the things that are contained only in one of the two constituent graphs where we get gap symbols here. So depending on whether you de uh, delete the first or the second gap symbol, you get one or the other input graph. Since this is a graph, we can, of course, align it with yet another graph. The same thing we can do with contact structures, where uh, the only difference now is that these graphs, in addition, contain an order on the vertices and therefore also contain or display uh, an induced sequence alignment. This is just here an example for three input structures uh, that I made up and you just can see you have the same type of decompositional structure. For RNA secondary structures, uh, we have a very special uh, structure. RNA secondary structures are these matchings that we can represent by uh, uh, a string uh, of ordered parentheses uh, that completely enclose substructures that do not cross. And for this type of crossing free matchings, we have a very simple decomposition. Any such structure either starts with an unpaired base or it starts with a base pair that encloses completely uh, a partial structure that is stuck inside. What that allows us to do uh, is, for the case of alignments, to use the very same composition and essentially just ask from which types of composition can we project the original structures. Uh, this leads to essentially 10, uh, or if you include those two exceptional cases, 12 cases uh, that allow us to decompose these structures, and with that uh, we, with this decomposition, we actually get a dynamic programming algorithm that allows us to compute these alignments in polynomial time. This looks like the Sankov algorithm, uh, and I will not go through the details of these recursions, I just give them here for completeness. Uh, the uh, point here is that we can use this definition of alignments for very general discrete structures. The benefit is that we are guaranteed that compositional properties that allow, for instance, progressive alignment algorithms to produce very large alignments of very many sequences. Uh, we have, in the protein case, general ordered graph alignments, and for RNAs, we get dynamic programming solutions that are similar to the Sankov algorithm and run in polynomial time. So far, this work is only the theory. The next steps, obviously, are to implement and benchmark this work. And finally, I would like to thank my collaborators on the topic of abstract alignments, which is Sarah Bergemann and Christian Höhner zu Sitterdissen in Leipzig and Christoph Flamm at the University of Vienna. Thank you very much for your attention.